Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the waters, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so love. God so love the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. Praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, oh praise Him for the The world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us. Forever believe in him, we'll live forever. The power of Freedom for God so love, God so love the world. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so love the world. Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. Whether you're joining us in the sanctuary, whether you're watching with us on our Facebook live stream, it is so good that you are here with us this morning. I do have a list of announcements this morning. So a lot of stuff going on in our church, uh, very busy with ministry opportunities and other opportunities for us. Uh, so if you don't have the little half sheet that's in the back there, uh, you can listen, maybe take some notes, and then pick up a half sheet on your way out. We have... Infant baptism coming up, an opportunity for that before too long, but we did want to offer uh, baptism for anyone who would like to be baptized, and we're looking at potentially Memorial Day weekend for that, uh, the 28th or 29th, which I do believe is the Friday and Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. Um, if you are interested in being baptized or know somebody that is interested in being baptized, uh, please see the pastor or one of the folks in the office. Next Sunday... Next Sunday is Youth Sunday. I know they have been putting a ton of work in, uh, getting prepared for Youth Sunday. The youth will be running pretty much every aspect of both of our services on Sunday, and we're so excited uh, to have them here with us. Lots of awesome elements of worship are going to be here next Sunday, so please come. Please bring a friend. Invite a friend to watch online with you if you're watching online. Uh, it is really going to be a blessing, and it's going to be an awesome service, so don't miss out next week. It is going to be uh, something you don't want to miss. This week is our traditional preschool Sunday, 
and usually we have all the preschool kids come in and we have a meal afterwards but because of covid restrictions we weren't really able to do that this year so instead we are going to be here in just a little while watching a video from the preschool which is a blessing in itself but we are doing a noisy offering for the preschool this week and the cans for the noisy offering are in the welcome area so if you have something you would like to contribute to our Fredericktown Christian Preschool uh, make sure you drop that in those cans on the way out don't miss out on that it is an opportunity once again to bless our preschool they are working with the youngest of us it's the next generation of believers that that can change the world it is it's really something that is powerful and as you watch the video here in just a little while you're gonna see the excitement on these kids faces and the love of God that is in their hearts so it is really an awesome opportunity for us to have a ministry to our young folks here in our community and then lastly uh, just a reminder if you are ever in need of a small prayer quilt for someone uh, please just let the church office know that is something we can provide we just need to know that it is something that you are desiring and we'll make sure that you have one and can get it to the person who needs it with that I think we have finished with our announcements I'm going to open us in a word of prayer this morning, and then we're going to move into our time of worship. Uh, I've already heard the sermon once today. It's a great sermon. Don't go anywhere. Don't miss it. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, very applicable to my life uh, as we speak. So, Father, we just invite you here this morning. Lord, we would just ask that you would refresh us, Lord, that you would restore our souls, Father, that you could draw us close to you this morning, that we could worship with, with joy in our hearts. Lord, with contentment, with peace that only comes from knowing you this morning. Lord, with an excitement that we know that you're going to move this morning. So, Father, fill this place with your spirit. Let it move amongst your people. And let us have a heart for worship, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you're able this morning, won't you stand with us as we move into our time of worship. you, Lord, I know your mercy never fails me, all my days I've been held in your hand, from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see the goodness of God. Let's sing of his goodness this morning. For all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will see the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have been the goodness of God For all my life you have been faithful Is running out, it's running out me. With my life. 
goodness of God. I'm gonna sing the goodness of God. Amen. He is good all the time, and all the time, He is good. Amen. What an awesome opportunity we have to worship. What an awesome opportunity we have to to lift our praises to the King. He is indeed worthy of our praises this morning. He's worthy of everything that we can give him, for he's given us so much more. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Live for you, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, and worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Yo 
worthy of every song you could ever see. Worthy of all the praise you could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. So I'm going to ask the uh, the tech guys up there. I know they're not expecting this. If you could just bring down the house lights for a minute for me, please. Just bring down the house lights. And you guys can have a seat for this last song. I just want you to take a second. So we're talking about rest this morning. So we're talking about just putting aside distractions and, and doing all those things that that the world says are so important and so necessary. But this morning, I just want you to take a second. We're just going to be quiet for just a second. I want you to think about the things that God has done for you, even in this past week. That God has done, he's moved some mountains in your life, maybe, or, or maybe he's just drawn close to you or you've drawn close to him over the past week. Think about a time like that. I'm just going to give us just a couple minutes here. And then we're going to close this morning with a song. And the lyrics of the song maybe an inspiration to you. It says, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. So God gives us the very breath in our lungs this morning. So let's take a second and just reflect, and then we'll sing about that goodness and that mercy.
our voice and let's lift that up. For great are you, Lord. Father, we do that this morning in honor of you. We praise your name in this place. Lord, let the windows rattle as we exalt you on high. Lord, as we lift you above all things. Father, let us have a morning of rest with you. Let us see your face. Let us hear the truth of your word. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Five weeks, about five weeks, we're going to have a golf outing, June 6, 2.30 in the afternoon. Great cause, obviously. We know why it's for. It's for the church to get money. And even if you're not a golfer, because people are getting their foursomes and paying their fees to go towards the meal and go towards the uh, money for the church. But if you're not a golfer, I guess I'm not qualified as not a golfer, but I'm really not a golfer, but um, if you have some friends that golf, ask them to get a foursome, or maybe you help sponsor their foursome. Um, some people that, uh, that normally don't come to the church, a good group, we know how good of a group it is, so uh, just an idea. And the three gals that are taking care of it is Stephanie, Angie, and Robin, and uh, you go on the church's website to get the forms is actually this form is there in the back table there will actually uh, give you a lot of information it has Angie's email address and again it's only about five weeks so uh, it's a good time a lot of fun um, we're starting at 2 30 this afternoon I'm wondering if we're gonna have donuts usually we start in the morning but I hope we don't miss the donuts that was a good any time just like coffee so um, glad to hopefully see you there and we'll have some Good times. Take care. I gotta get this church cleaned up. I've got lots to do. Got some dust, and you know this is this is God's church. And we need to take care of it. Wonder if we can get some people to help us. Let's see right here. Oh, there's my screwdriver and a paintbrush. Hello. What's going on? 
well, I'm just at the church. I'm trying to just clean up a little bit. You know, we've got this, uh, we want to keep everything nice and spick and span. What's that? Oh, May 1st? Oh, you want me to go shopping? Oh, um, I could prop up. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got a cleanup day by the trustees, and I'm on that committee. And you know what? I wouldn't want to miss it for anything. So I don't think I can go, but I can go the next weekend if you'd like me to. Oh, yeah, these, the people that are on the trustees committee, they are awesome. I mean, we got Ryan Wenger. He is hilarious. He's, our, he's the funniest leader I've ever met. He's so funny. He makes us laugh. And then there's Todd Lindemann. Last meeting, he tried to get those blueprints out, and he couldn't read those, but he's really good at roofing. <laughs> yeah, and, oh, and then Angie Simmons, bless her little heart. She's got to keep all the notes and everything. I don't even know how she keeps up with us. And then Kelly, Kelly Brown, he's funny because he's the one, he's the oldest one in the group. Don't tell him that, but he is. And, but, and he's the one that has to keep us like in line. Yeah. Okay, so we can go shopping the next weekend, but I'm telling you what, May 1st, we're going to start like at 8 o'clock, and I hope everybody can come. Now, I got to tell you something else. Do you know Jane Maxwell? She's hilarious. She was in our last meeting, and she had that discipline book in, out, and I was like, ooh. She had her cheater glasses on, and I was really scared because she was the book of discipline. But she's on the committee, too. So, anyways, we've got a really good group, and I do apologize, but I can't go shopping. I'm going to help with that uh, on Saturday um, the 1st, and we're going to start at 8 o'clock. So, anyways, um, I will talk to you later, and I love you, Mom. Bye-bye. So, you guys, anyways, <laughs> hopefully we can get some of you guys to sign up. We have some clipboards in the back. If you didn't really understand what my whole concept was there, um, we would love to, to get some of you guys here to help us clean up. And it's, it's actually some maintenance stuff. Um, we got clean up, I think, and then other stuff on our, on our program. But hopefully you can help us. We do have clipboards back there. And honestly, Ryan is one of the funniest leaders. If you've never been in a meeting with him, he, he does keep it kind of light. So anyways, hopefully you can, you can do that. Am I missing anything, Ryan, that we could add to that? I think we're starting at 8 o'clock on May 1st, and um, we'd love to have you sign up. So thank you, guys. I'm uh, Maddie Bender. Um, I'm going down to Honduras on the Honduras mission trip, and I took some pictures as a fundraiser idea. So there is a clipboard in the back, and it you write you write down what you want, and then you can give money, and then it'll be going on uh, for two weeks. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. And you'll get the pictures by Memorial Day if you order them. So these are some pictures I took. Thank you all so much for your support during this crazy school year. We want to share a few songs that our preschoolers have been working very hard on. Thank you for giving to our Loose Change offering. We hope you enjoy the show. God bless.
it's fun to look out into the congregation and see some of the folks that are getting up and walking out the doors now or these kids just a few years ago. So as I said earlier, this, this is the future of the church. It's the ones that are coming up, the next generation that, that can literally change the world. So we do thank you for your support of our preschool here at the church. <clears throat> our scripture reading for today comes from Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, and I'll be reading out of the New International Version. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. For even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. May the Lord add his understanding to the reading of his word this morning. Uh, uh, one of the reasons I so love looking and, and you know, admiring the kids is because of their energy. Their energy. Uh, I don't, I don't too often see a child, a youth, that's tired. Uh, I'm usually over here in the office about 1 o'clock in the afternoons, and oftentimes the kids, because of everything that's been going on, they have to come in different entrances. The kids have been coming in. Some of them have been coming in the doors back here. And they've been going down the hall here, and you can just hear them every day just chattering and enjoying themselves and and, and it's just it's it's a pick-me-up it really is a pick-me-up and I, I so enjoy the kids but if there is one thing that's typified this crazy crazy last year plus I would say that that typical characteristic might be weariness 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 at what life has brought. Weariness at the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And whenever I think of really about anything, but even weariness, I think of Jesus. I don't think of Jesus being particularly weary, but yet I, in his ministry, he always had people coming at him. Not just one or two. He had crowds coming at him. He had hordes of people, thousands of people coming at him, and they all wanted or needed something. Now, he was fully and completely God, but he was also fully and completely human. And like all people, he needed rest. He needed that rest. And sometimes we all need that rest. Sometimes, uh, even when we're tired, we're expected. I mean, we just can't kick back and say, well, I'm going to take today off. No, we can't do that. We're expected to show up and do what needs to be done. But that creates stress. But that's been so, again, so typical, particularly of the past year. When, you, when I think of uh, weariness and stress, I think of five things, all beginning with the letter C, that can cause stress and weariness. The first is change. A change of job. A change of relationships. A change in health. Conflict is another. Relational conflict. Political conflict. Even a sense of emotional conflict within yourself can just wear you down. Criticism. Your boss is unhappy with your work. Your spouse is unhappy in your marriage. Your friend is disappointed in you in some way. And they all let you in one way or another know about it. The concerns of the day. Everything from the state of the country to your tires are balding and you need to scrape up some money to pay for new tires. And then there are the crises which we all face from time to time. A loved one's health. A child makes a decision you know they're going to regret, but you can't stop them. Sometimes it can seem as if you're lurching from one crisis to another. 
Jesus felt all of that. He felt all of that. That weariness. He felt all of that. He experienced that to a greater degree, by the way, than you and I ever will. And when the crowds gathered around him, when the circumstances crowded in on him, he did not push the people away. He did not run from the circumstances. But his main look was not to look around at everything was that was going on, but his main look was up. He looked to the Father. He paused and he gave thanks for the Father's provision. And then he cooperated with God's great, great plan. Think of when the need was so great around him. I think of uh, uh, when he... Uh, led thousands, 5,000, at least 5,000 men out into the wilderness, out into a remote area. And they got out there and it was toward the end of the day. And they didn't have anything to eat. And so what did Jesus do? Here's what he did. And here's how we're to handle issues in our lives. As I said, first he looked up. He looked up and he thanked God for the provision that God was going to, to uh, provide. And then he trusted he trusted. There was no doubt in Jesus' mind that God was going to do a miracle. There was no doubt in his mind. And then he just, when he looked up, he trusted. And then he just went right on serving. And folks, that's what we're called to do as well. When stress and weariness are rising and power is failing, the surest way through is prayer. Which is why we often see Jesus during his earthly ministry pulling away intentionally not not to get away from people in the crowds not to abandon their needs but he pulled away for short periods of time so that he himself could make sure that his relationship with the father was secure and then he could go and meet the needs of the crowd he prioritized prayer Luke 5 16 but he Jesus would withdraw to desolate places and pray in Mark 6, 46, after he'd taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. There are examples in the Gospels of Jesus rising early or staying up late, even all night, to pray. He intentionally spent time in prayer. He would talk with God, he'd rest in God, and then he'd be equipped to further the Father's plan. Now, I'm about to give you a verse. I... I'm not going to kid you, I have been feeling it here in recent weeks and in recent months. I've been feeling it. And the Lord just popped this scripture out at me, and I'm sure I had read it before, but I had never seen it in depth the way the Holy Spirit showed it to me. And I want to give this verse to you today, and I want you to write down the scriptural citation. You don't have to write down right now the, the entire verse out, but I hope when you go home, you'll write the verse out. And then you'll put it in a prominent place. Put it in your marketed or put it in your Bible as a bookmark. Put it on your fridge or your mirror. It will help you. It has helped me tremendously. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, verse 15. Isaiah 30, verse 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning. And that word returning means repentance. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. Now what that is saying is that things may be hectic, even chaotic on the outside, but at the same time it is possible to be a soul at rest. I'm not, I don't expect God to give me a life that has no busyness about it. I don't expect God to give me a life that is always easy. That's unrealistic. That's not what we're called to, for as Christians. But God does say, I will give you the peace that in the midst of everything that's going on, you can have that soul rest. And what God is saying to the Hebrews here in this scripture is that they were in trouble like they so often were in the Old Testament. They were in trouble. There were enemies from without who were threatening them and they didn't know what to do. 
the enemies that were threatening them, as were most of the time they were being threatened, they were greater than they were. And so the Hebrews were scared. And so they started running around. And they started looking around. And in their, they scrambled to try and find a way out of their problem. They wanted to run down to Egypt. It was kind of a consensus then. Let's go down to Egypt and see if we can make a bargain with Pharaoh and Pharaoh can protect us. We'll come under the shelter of his care. Well, history tells us that that particular Pharaoh that they were looking to for, for shelter was literally the weakest Pharaoh in all of history. He could not protect Egypt, let alone some other country. But the Hebrews were running. I have, I have this picture, this faint picture. I, I know we have some farm folks here, and, and so this is common to you. It wasn't common to me, and I have this faint picture as of a child going to my grandparents. And the first time I saw a chicken butchered, first time I saw a chicken butchered, I mean, I'm, I don't know, five, six years old. And, you know, I don't really particularly want to see this, but, you know, I'm there, and so, you know, you got to watch. So, wham, off comes the head. But the body didn't stop. <laughs> The body's running all over the place. The body of that chicken is going 100 miles an hour, and it's going all over the place. And that's what the picture that I, that I get when God, what God is saying to the Hebrews here. You know, you're running around all over the place, like a chicken with its head cut off, trying to figure out a way to escape your problems. And God is telling them, and God is telling us, quit running around looking everywhere to, 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 for your help to escape your problems. And he's saying that to us. Quit running around, looking at other places in order to escape your situations. I want to look at each of the components of that verse, Isaiah 30, 15. See what God is saying to us and how we can turn this into our own soul rest. The scripture began in repentance, in turning around. Quit running around for other means of deliverance. Turn around to me, God is saying. Turn around to me. Repentance is needed when we fail to look to the Lord first for our deliverance. And how many of us truly do? First thing, first thing, look to the Lord for deliverance. Too often times that, that, Looking to the Lord, that look to the Lord is way down our list of things to do. Just a few verses before that scripture in Isaiah 30, verses 1 through 2, God says to the Israelites and to us, Ah, stubborn children who carry out a plan, but not mine. And God goes on to say that when we do that, we add sin to sin without asking for direction, but we take refuge in other places and people. Now, what I'm talking about in turning to God first, it's an acquired habit. It's not something we're raised to do. It's a discipline we have to intentionally build into our Christian lives. We are conditioned from our earliest life to fix our own problems. We're to look for solutions within ourselves and then look around at other people and things and then worry all the time and at some point down the line then we might turn to the Lord for help God says no 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 you've got the sequence backwards look to me first and repent for looking everywhere else first in day-to-day -day life whether we're going through great stress or not if we're gonna have victorious Christian lives we are called we must commune with God daily that's got to be our number one priority. Don't think that tomorrow I've got to do A, B, and C, and I've got to get those things done, and those are my priorities. No, our priority every single day must be to spend time with the Lord. That's when the gap is closed between what the Bible says our lives should be as Christians and what our lives often are as Christians. That gap will start to close when we spend daily intentional time with the Lord. So the first step in dealing with stress and weariness 
and living the victorious Christian life is repentance. The second step, which can only be done after the first step, is rest. Rest. In Israel, I, I remember seeing a sign that said, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's what the English translation said. But it really said, Pray for the shalom of Jerusalem. And that's a broader term. It means kind of an all-encompassing peace that touches every part of your life. And when God is talking about bringing us rest, He's not just talking about us getting a few good hours of sleep. That's not what He's talking about. The rest that He is talking about is much more deep and much more all-encompassing than simple physical rest. Once we return to Him, once we repent, we're given the great blessing of resting in Him. And it's almost like we can exhale. It's almost like we can feel the weight on us becoming lighter. God says, repent. Return to me so I can take care of you. That's what God wants us to do. Turn to Him so He can take care of us. Many of us stink at this. Many are so worn out by life, you can feel like you're that hamster on the wheel, always running around but never getting anywhere. If we want true direction, repentance and rest is a must. Sometimes we picture God as very stern, and only grudgingly does He let us turn to Him. No, 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 no. God welcomes us. He bids us to come into His presence. Here's the old, old story. I've told it to you before. A man in the 18th century was riding a horse out in the middle of nowhere, and he came upon a rushing river, and he decided he would try and cross it. And so they, they went into the river, and immediately the, the current of the river was too great. man got knocked off the horse, and he was struggling. He was struggling even to survive. And as he was really struggling in the raging river, uh, another group of men came up on the river. And... The man who was in the river started yelling and he looked at one man in particular and he said to that one man, you sir, you sir, can you help me? Can you help me? And that man that he called out to for help, he jumped off his horse and got down and ended up saving the man's life. And a little bit later after the man had gotten out of the river, he was asked, why did you look to that one particular man out of that group of men? Why would you look at that one particular man to help you? Because you see, the man in the river didn't know that the man he called out to for help was Thomas Jefferson. And Jefferson got him out. And the man said later, he said, I called out to him because he had a yes face. He had a yes face. Folks, the father has a yes face. The son has has a yes face and he loves it he loves it when we look to him to provide for our needs let's think about this let's say you have a young child who's climbed up a tree and climbed out on a limb and and then gotten stuck there high on a limb and and as you are passing by that tree the child cries out for help well you don't look up see the child up there and say well you know I, I really can't help you until I know how your grades have been lately no, you, we don't do that. You'd help that child immediately. Well, Jesus used a very similar example to show us how God feels about us and how God reacts when we call upon Him. He welcomes us. He says, come here. Come here and rest. Just rest in me. And not only does He encourage us to rest, but His rest replenishes us. The only question is, are we going to accept His offer of rest and replenishment. But when we do, two pictures come into my mind. One is of a child, very young child, resting in their parents' arms after running to them in need. I often see on Facebook precious pictures of a child snuggled in their mom or dad's arms, utterly content and at rest. And the other picture I have when I think about this, is from the Bible. When Elijah was so exhausted, and he was so depressed as a result of his exhaustion, that he ran out in the middle of nowhere, and he just collapsed. And God sent an angel to take care of him, 
to provide him with, with food and strength and courage and direction for the future. That's what God wants to do for us. And the third thing that happens when we do the things, when we do things the Lord's way is quietness. Jesus was busier than any of us. Um, I was looking at my schedule this past, this coming week. It's a, it's a busy schedule. Um, got a, uh, a wedding ceremony. Got, I have, uh, I only have one funeral this week. I have another one in a couple of weeks. And just a lot of different things going on. Gonna, gonna take a quick trip here pretty soon uh, as well. But yet no one here is as busy as Jesus was. No one. No one. But as we saw, he would go away by himself to pray. He got quiet away from the hustle and bustle of an extraordinarily busy life. We make time for what we want to do. Folks, I, I, I'm sorry, but the older I get, the, more, the less willing I am to put up with excuses. Uh, hopefully within myself, but in, but in others as well. Listen, there's, there's no excuse. I, I don't really want to hear anybody say, I'm too busy to spend time alone with the Lord. I'm too busy. I've got too much going on. If that is in actuality true, then you're too busy. And you really need to cut some things out. Because our great priority as Christians is to spend time alone with the Lord. And that leads to the fourth result of this scripture, which is trust trust. When I trust, I look to the Lord, not somewhere else for help. When I trust, I rest. When I trust, I am quiet, even in the midst of busyness. God's way is so much better than our way. Repenting, resting, being quiet, and trusting. And this verse says as we do it this way, as we, as we do it God's way, we are strengthened. Did you hear that? Instead of running and worrying, instead of depleting what little strength we have, we repent, we rest, we're quiet, and the end result is strength. The end result of doing the opposite, of running and worrying, is a further depletion of what little we have. The opposite of what we really need. In James, it says we can rejoice in our trials. How is that possible? How is that possible? Folks, the last year and a year and plus has been a trial. I know that. But yet, we need to understand that the most strength-depleting events can be the pathway to returning and resting in God. And when we do that, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians, we might things are still going to happen. But as Paul said, we'll be perplexed but not driven to despair. We'll be persecuted, but not forsaken. We'll be struck down, but we won't be destroyed. We can be in every kind of stressful situation, but still not lose our way as we respond as Jesus did. Returning, resting, being freed up to cooperate with God, not lashing out at life's challenges, but rather stepping back and looking up. Jesus famously said, Come to me, all who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now when he's talking about a yoke and putting on a yoke, that doesn't sound like rest to me. It doesn't sound like something that will be restful to me. No. No, when we think about rest, we tend to think about kicking back and doing nothing. That's not what Jesus is talking about here. A yoke is a harness that goes around the necks of two oxen as they pull a load or plow a field or whatever they're doing. Accepting Jesus' yoke is a picture of submission to Him. But it's also a picture of help because... I'm not trying to pull the load myself. No, I'm in the yoke with Jesus. And Jesus takes the lead. In each team of oxen, one ox takes the lead. The other ox follows. Jesus will do the work. He will take the lead. 
but we have to be yoked to him to get the benefit. And so to enjoy intimacy, we bow before him. We accept his yoke. He promises, my yoke is not going to choke you. It's not going to be wearisome. It's not going to be confining. The irony is, we have to be yoked to him to be free. Rest for the weary. Not a lack of busyness, but rest in the midst of it. It means when people expect you to be shaken, you're going to be calm. It means you're at peace when you are expected to be acting crazy. It means you sleep instead of worrying and tossing and turning. That's what Jesus offers his children. Folks, I, I so love all of you and so appreciate all of you and so appreciate you living the lives that you're living and following the Lord in spite of difficult circumstances of the past year. I just so, so much appreciate and love you. You've been an absolute inspiration. You've been an absolute inspiration. But I know the last year has been tough. I know it has been wearisome and burdensome. And the Lord does not mean us to go through life like that. No, he says, no matter what the circumstances are, take my yoke upon you and I will give rest for the weary. Maybe today you need some rest. All-encompassing soul rest. Where you are at peace in spite of chaos, you have joy within in spite of sadness around you. You have certainty of faith in spite of, um, well, uncertain circumstances. That's what the Lord wants to give you. Today the altar is open and the invitation is given, as always, to perhaps accept the one who will give you that peace and that rest. Yes, absolutely. If you don't know Christ, today would be the great day to do that. But folks... You need rest, soul rest that comes when we willingly put on the yoke of the Lord and let him lead and work in cooperation with him. If you need that today, and who of us doesn't, the altar is open and the invitation is given. Let's stand together for our closing song today.
never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let that only comes from the Lord put on the yoke of Jesus put on his yoke and he will give you rest he will lead you through whatever will come your way he will see you through and you will be a wonderful splendid example of his grace and his strengthening power as you live your life Lord as we go from this place now we go willingly humbled before you, submitted to you, putting on your yoke, but letting you lead. You lead, we will follow. And Lord, I thank you that you never leave us alone. You never let us fend for, leave us to fend for ourselves. Lord, you give us that soul rest. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we pray for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And when the night is holding on to me. God is holding on. And when the night is holding on to me, God is holding on.